So open it up to questions. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself while we go through some questions. Okay. So, um, okay. hi, Melissa. Yes, can you I hear me? Know. Oh, good. Um, okay. I I have been concerned about water for a long time, but in a recent business week, they were talking about topsoil, the loss of topsoil, mm -hmm. and they're predicting that within 60 years, unless we do something about it, it will basically be gone, mm -hmm. and food production will be really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, is anything being done to keep our topsoil? Well, a lot of people are studying um, in agriculture mm -hmm. different methods of farming that don't end up depleting the topsoil. One of the big problems with the depletion of topsoil is that, say, just take for example Madagascar, that the island where the lemurs are from at the tip of um, the southern tip of Africa. 90% yeah. of its natural rainforests have, are gone, and they're gone because what happens is when people want to um, when they need food, they just um, cut down all the forest and then they use um, techniques of farming that are plowing and that are very, um, they, des they decimate everything that keeps the soil in place. The soil is um, depleted within, they don't do the rotational things, they don't plant things that put nutrients back. So what they need is they need education in how can you grow what you need in a way where you're not depleting the soil. What they have been doing is depleting the soil and then cutting down more rainforest. So there just needs to be a great deal more education and there also needs to be um, a voice from people like us that say it's not acceptable to use farming techniques that deplete the topsoil because a lot of our modern um, hyper food production that we've been able to accomplish through the green revolution actually does deplete the soil. And so it's, it's been wonderful for, um, for avoiding famines, but it has been a short term, um, it's a short term solution rather than a sustainable solution. And all around the world, the World Bank and the UN Human Development and all the people who work in these things are aware of this and writing reports about it. But it's a, a matter of getting Monsanto and um, Bayer, <laughs> who supply all the seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also because we have become addicted to incredibly high yields that are associated with um, the, the special um, breeds, the, the genetically modified seeds that are pesticide resistant and then um, using very heavy pesticides. And that is not good for the soil. That, that kills the soil. And it is not able to replenish itself because it kills all of the microbes as well, all of the bacteria that are part of the synergy of keeping soil alive. So we really need to be rethinking how we're gonna do things, but in a way that um, is mindful of the benefits we've received from the revolution, the green revolution. So it's not as if these are bad people and we're, we're coming along with a better idea. It's that we've received a great benefit, but now we have to kind of figure out how we're gonna modify it. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Thanks, Diana. Um, Melissa, so I have a question, and this is Jan. Um, how does, do, do these, do, does each group have their own um, fundraisers or funding um, 
Yeah, so the way Rotarian action groups work is that they are not allowed to do any fundraising. Um, so we cannot solicit donations. What we can do, um, we can solicit donations for our projects, but not for the administrative overhead. So the administrative overhead is supported entirely by dues which is, and we don't have any dues yet, and that's why we don't have much of, a, <laughs> of administration. Um, but it's, um, we can, for grants, we can get money from grants, and we also facilitate matches with global grants and with club and district funds. So it just follows that uh, mantra or that paradigm that Rotary International has set up is that we might get a donor who wants to support an environmental sustainability grant of um, energy poverty reduction, and then match that with global grants and um, club and district grants. And each club figures out, e each Rotarian Action Group does its own fundraising. Okay, yeah, so they, they collaborate with, um, specifically for projects to fundraise. Right, right. Yes, and, it, and it's on, on the basis of a particular project, not for, it's not, um, the Rotarian Action Groups never sit on a pot of cash. They, okay. they are not, they, they are very slim in terms of their administrative costs and that's supported entirely from whatever the dues structure is there. And the, the focus is on getting matching grants, global grants, and bringing people together, and also bringing expertise, really identifying the expertise among the Rotarians, giving them a platform where they can share their expertise and making that available. Okay, great, awesome. Um, are there any other questions? I'm glad I said I was going to talk for a short time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like everyone's feeling shy tonight. Um, but if there are any additional questions, feel free to add in the chat or email me and I can forward them to Melissa. Uh, this has been very, very... Um, uh, this has been amazing, amazing to learn about because I know there's so much more that um, we can learn about Rotary um, and that what Rotarians doing together can, can bring about. So um, I want to say thank you, <laughs> Melissa, for being here tonight. And we really greatly appreciate it and would like to present to you this Certificate of Appreciation for being our speaker this evening, for, for imparting valuable insights and inspiration as our guest speaker. Um, again, learning about action groups and hearing your experience with them and even you know being in one that's really newly created uh it's it's amazing to learn about um so again if anyone has any questions um i know a couple people had to jump off um or, or, were, or were pulled off the call accidentally so um those who were uh do say thank you for, for sharing tonight. Uh, and I would like to ask Eve if she could lead us in the four-way test. Certainly. The four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendship? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Great, thank you. And it sounds, and just as I'm reading through the um, the chat tonight, we, we also have Chris, member of the Rotary Action Group for Endangered Species. Wait, is it Rages, Chris? Is that right? Rages? Yes, it's Rages. And it looks like Melissa is also a member. Well, awesome. Well, we'll have to learn more about that. Thank you, everyone, for um, being online this evening, and have a wonderful evening.